Basic medical scientists, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about vibro cholera. Right, so this is the second part. In the previous video, we covered Helicobacter pylori, right? And we are saying like, uh, this gram-negative KFD rods, all of them are oxygen positive. And how do you differentiate them? Or what's peculiar about each of them? Uh, is that H. pylori produces ureas. Fibrocholera grows in alkaline media. Uh, Cambylobacter jejuni grows in 42 degrees Celsius, right? So in this video, I said we're talking about uh, uh, fibrocholera. You need to watch this video first, H. pylori. So you can click the link on the top right corner here and watch that video first. Right. Uh, let's start with the morphology and metabolism of fibrocholera. Firstly, how is this bacteria transmitted? It's via fecal oral route. Fecal oral route. Uh, this bacteria is short, coma-shaped, gram-negative bacteria with a single, single polar flagellum, right? So you can see here a single flagellum on one end, a single polar flagellum. Uh, as I told you, uh, it's an oxidase-positive uh, bacteria. And it ferments sugars except lactose. This is important. It doesn't ferment lactose. All right. Uh, let's talk about the virulence factors. Virulence factors in uh, vibrocholera. Uh, firstly, because it's motile, it is an H antigen. H antigen, number one. The second one is the enzyme called mucinase. Mucinase, it digests mucin. Right. So it digests the muc mucus layer so that the vibro cholera can attach to the cells uh, you need to pay attention it attach to the epithelial cells it doesn't enter it doesn't enter it's non-invasive right uh, another virulent factor is fimbria fimbria will help with attachment or of this bacteria to the cells again all right so you see h antigen mucinase Fimbri, right? Uh, and I said it's non-invasive. This is very important. Uh, and also, you need to know that uh, vibrocholera is sensitive to stomach acid. We call it acid labile, right? So for the patient to have uh, this disease, it requires like large, uh, large inoculum. And also, if the patient is uh, low gastric acidity, this patient is at risk of easily getting a cholera, right? Okay. Uh, now let's talk about the toxin, right? So the toxin found in cholera is an enterotoxin, right? An enterotoxin. And it is a special name called cholerogen. Right, so it's a, it's just another uh, fancy way of uh, differentiating uh, this enterotoxin, cholerogen. Right, so this toxin is the same mechanism of action as the E. coli's uh, labile toxin, although cholerogen is coded on the chromosome, while the labile toxin is transmitted via what? via plasmid. Right, so we'll talk about E. coli later. Right, just uh, check uh, in the playlist. Maybe you will see the video on E. coli. Right, uh, one more time. Cholerogen is coded on chromosome. Labile toxin in E. coli transmitted via plasmid. Right, so cholerogen has two subunits: the A subunit and B subunit. Okay, so A for action, B for binding. Right, so what comes first? Binding. Right, so the B subunit binds to the GM1 gangliocide on the intestinal epithelial cell surface, allowing the entry of A subunit. A is for action. In the cell, the A subunits activate the G protein, which in turn stimulates the activity of membrane-bound adenylate cyclase, resulting in a production of cyclic AMP. Right, so this uh, stimulation of this G protein is continuous, right? So there will be high amounts of what cyclic AMP, 
right so the intracellular cyclic amp results in active secretion of sodium and chloride as well as inhibition of sodium and chloride reabsorption right what will happen if there is no reabsorption of these two there will be uh, like a, a large quantities of this in the lumen so water will follow this is the mechanism of uh, dehydration right okay let's just um go to the next point the fluid bicarbonates potassium are lost with the osmotic pull of the uh, sodium chloride as it travels down the intestine right now let's talk about uh the clinical features right the disease presents with abrupt onset of watery diarrhea which is classically described as looking like rice water uh, with the loss of up to one liter of fluid per hour in severe cases shock from isotonic fluid loss will occur if the patient is not rehydrated physical findings such as diminished pulses sunken eyes and poor skin tiger will develop with severe dehydration so cholera causes death by dehydration that's how death occurs dehydration as simple as that okay uh, let's talk about diagnosis of cholera All right firstly uh, dark field microscope remember dark field microscope is for motile organisms right so dark field microscopy of stool reveals motile organisms that are immobilized with anti serum it grows as flat colonies on selective media known as a uh, tcbs agar the thiosulfate citrate biosalt sucrose agar another method is microscopic examination right so microscopic exam of stool should not reveal leukocytes that's white blood cells but may reveal numerous curved rods with fast darting movements right so uh, there is another buzzer word uh, they say like uh, like the movement is like of a fish in a stream yeah just to remember that fish in a stream uh, they will be referring to cholera now let's talk about treatment of cholera right so for treatment uh firstly we need to replace fluid and electrolyze that's the first thing and then there is an antibiotic which is commonly used is doxycycline right so doxycycline will shorten the duration of illness right there you have it doxycycline uh another drug which i also want to mention is fluoroquinolone right but i remember doxycycline in most exam papers there is only this one doxycycline right thank you so much if you like this video please subscribe you don't need to pay anything just to click the subscribe and click the notification bell so that whenever i upload a new video you will receive a notification right so that we study together until next time Thank you.